dear friends, a very good afternoon and very warm welcome as we celebrate this weekend of the Epiphany. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to, and to you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my, my thoughts and in my, my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading. From the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out, Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising on you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples. Above you, the Lord now rises and above you his glory appears. The nations come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Lift up your eyes and look around. All are assembling and coming towards you, your sons from far away, 
and daughters being tenderly carried. At this sight, you will grow radiant, your heart throbbing and full, since the riches of the sea will flow to you, the wealth of the nations come to you. Camels in throngs will cover you, and dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. Everyone in Sheba will come, bringing gold and incense, and singing the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Judgment and thou the king, and with your justice, the king's son, he shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Sheba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, the lives of the poor he shall save. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You have probably heard how I have been entrusted by God with the grace he meant for you, and that it was by a revelation that I was given the knowledge of the mystery. This mystery that has now been revealed through the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, was unknown to any men in past generations. It means that pagans now share the same inheritance, that they are parts of the same body, and that the same promise has been made to them in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant king of the Jews? They asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know so that I too may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, and there in front of them was a star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight and going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And falling to their knees, they did him homage. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and return to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. No, dear brethren, brothers and sisters, that as we have rejoiced at the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, so by high leave of God's mercy, we announce to you also the joy of his resurrection who is our Savior. On the 22nd day of February will fall Ash Wednesday, and the beginning of the fast of the most sacred Lenten season. On the ninth day of April, 
you will celebrate with joy Easter Day, the Paschal Feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the 18th day of May will be the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the 28th day of May, the Feast of Pentecost. On the 11th day of June, the Feast of the Most Holy body and blood of Christ. On the third day of December, the first Sunday of the Advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And on 7th of January, you'll have a homily. <laughs> it's lovely, this tradition. But we do have our calendars, you know. Dear friends, on this wonderful, uh, in this wonderful account, of this Sunday of the Epiphany, we have the three wise men, foreigners, non-Jews, coming to give Jesus homage. Somehow they acknowledge something wonderful, something special was present in the baby of Bethlehem, in this babe of Bethlehem. And on the contrary, in a very strange way, Herod, who was a Jew, saw this birth as a threat and with an evil intention was planning to do away with the child. How strange this uh, very different uh, reactions or scenarios in today's gospel. How contrasting were the two responses to the birth of Jesus. So, dear friends, if nothing else, this brings us to a realization that faith is a gift. Faith is a gift. Being born into a religion does not guarantee you faith. Herod was born a Jew. He was more preoccupied with his own status, with his own position, as king of Galilee. So you have this realization that faith is indeed a gift, pure gift. Christmas, dear friends, is God hidden in human frailty as we sit in our Christmas creep. Hidden in human frailty as a baby. For us, sometimes it would require a leap of faith to be able to recognize that God comes among us as a helpless infant. So where are we in our faith when confronted with such mystery? How do we perceive it? How do we approach Christmas and Epiphany where the message is, your God comes among us as a helpless infant. How do we reconcile? Do we struggle to comprehend this reality? Do we take our faith for granted and reduce Christmas to turkeys and ham? Is only Christmas turkey and ham and presents? Or is it more? Is it more? Is it more about the person of Jesus Christ? Often, dear friends, when people speak of God, you know, when people 
uh, you ask them, what is your image of who God is? They expect God to do great things for them. Just last week, I was running through a few YouTube clips from different pastors, you know, and there is one, what, a rather aggressive tone, almost demanding Jesus in an arrogant way to guarantee prosperity, to guarantee success, and to guarantee fame. You know, you, you, you just Google around, you find them. Not very difficult to find these days. Then you wonder, you know, their Jesus, is it the same as our Jesus? You know, how come our Catholic Jesus does not do all these things? Maybe I should join the other church. The other Jesus is more powerful. It guarantees me prosperity, right? It guarantees me good things in life. Our Catholic Jesus all the time is about suffering. Isn't it, our Catholic Jesus? Maybe we are in the wrong church. Our Jesus is not so powerful. How strange, dear friends. Our Catholic Jesus is portrayed as a helpless baby in, in a smelly manger. Our greatest symbol is a crucifix. Look at this corpus here. A dying man hanging on a cross. That is our greatest symbol recognizable in any Catholic church. Uh, St. Mary's a bit difficult, maybe. But in any other Catholic church, you have the crucifix. Right? It's a prominent symbol of suffering and shame, of weakness and of death. Why? And our greatest treasure, our greatest treasure for which many have died, is our Eucharist, humble form of bread and wine. You know, nothing great. Nothing great to, to sing about, right? Nothing to show. So you wonder, the Catholic Church, our greatest symbol, our greatest treasure, it comes in very uh, countercultural images of suffering, of weakness, of simple forms of bread and wine. So to be a Catholic, dear friends, you must either be a masochist who loves suffering, or you take this leap of faith to hold on to what scriptures have told us. To take this leap of faith and to hold on. Epiphany means manifestation or revelation or realization. That's epiphany. You know, sometimes you say, I have an epiphany. You, you realize something. So epiphany has those sense of manifestation or realization. Our feast reveals to us God in Jesus is hidden in humble form. So we are invited to allow our faith to be the star that would guide our pilgrim way on earth. Our faith reminds us they, they are like the pointers they give us direction in our lives. They remind us, they point us to the way. So our faith is like this star. Faith is indeed a gift. We should not take this for granted, but bring along our treasures of our heart and our mind to be enlightened by Christ, to see things differently, even in matters of faith to have a different perception of what life is, what constitutes happiness, what constitutes success. Sometimes success is a, is a bad word because if we judge everything by the, the norms of what is success, we end up with a lot of frustration in life. But our scriptures today gives us an alternative to the vision of life. So, as the three wise men brought to Christ their treasures, let us bring to Christ our own treasure of our minds and our hearts and let it be enlightened by the message of the gospel, by the message of Christ. And through the light of our own faith, 
may we lead others to Christ. Not through empty promises, not through bold assertions, but through the very simple realization that we are loved by God. And may our Eucharist today reveal to us that Jesus Christ, the Lord of the universe, is hidden in humble bread and wine. So dear friends, let us together make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On the Feast of the Epiphany, when the light of Christ was revealed to the whole world, we turn to God our Father, confident that He will hear our prayers. Our response is, We seek your face, Lord. We, we seek, seek your face, Lord. Lord. For Pope Francis and William Cardinal Go, that they persevere in bringing God's covenant of love to all who seek to know justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. We seek your face, Lord. For the Church, that all who follow Christ will recognize that differences are a source of richness and strive to be a beacon of light, revealing God's presence to the world. We pray to the Lord. We seek your face, Lord. For all world and civic leaders, that they look forward to the new year of working together with hope and harmony for the common good of humanity. We pray to the Lord. We, we seek your face, face, Lord. For those who live in the darkness of despair, poverty, neglect and bereavement, that they find in us the joy of the gospel and through us, Come to know Jesus. We pray to the Lord. We seek your face, Lord. For our community, that inspired by the Magi, we offer wholeheartedly our gifts to God and use them in his service. We pray to the Lord. We seek your face, Lord. Radiant God, as you led the Magi to Bethlehem, guide us in the light of your ways. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honour of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, a bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, a bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Francis and St. Clair, St. Anthony and blessed Allegra, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. 
Let the servers come on and form a divine teaching we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So dear friends, as we begin this new year, um, the friars have appointed a new parish team uh, for the next three years, the next triennium. And together, Father Mike de Cruz remains the parish priest, but he has three other friars to assist him uh, as a new parish team. So there will be Fathers Julian, Aidan and Robin. Okay, so you have four friars serving you in this parish. Very lucky. Uh, diocesan parishes have only two or three. So you are lucky to be in a Franciscan parish here and served by the friars. So uh, we welcome them. I invite you to cooperate with them in this ministry. So I wish you then a wonderful weekend with your families and friends. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.